Hi everyone, this is Mr. Patrick Ang. Uh, we have finally come to our last video on forces and pressure. So like the previous videos, I need you to take out your notes so that you can be filling in the blanks. Okay, so sadly in this video, there is not going to be any other videos except this PowerPoint. It's because there's a lot of uh, calculations I would need you to learn. So yeah, let's get going. So lesson notes 3, we are covering pressure. Okay, we're covering pressure, we're going to find out the unit for pressure, the formula for pressure, and then how we can use pressure in our everyday life. So pressure is a kind of force, but uh, it is force in a specific area. Okay, so we'll find out all about that later. So a comic that I found uh, well, while I was preparing this, so yeah, now you know why that all our water coolers have very little pressure. Okay, the definition for pressure is the amount of force acting perpendicularly on a, new, a unit area. Perpendicularly basically, basically means like right angles. At right angles, it means it's like going, let's say if your area is flat on the surface, on the table, you are acting downwards. So you, you actually form a right angle with the surface you're going on. Um, yeah, you will get to understand that in the next few slides, don't worry. So, like force, the unit for force is Newton. The SI unit for pressure is a new word we call Pascal. Or in short, we will write PA. Not just write P, you must write PA. Capital P, small letter A. So again, Pascal comes from a, a famous scientist known as Bill's Pascal. Okay, born in 19, sorry, 1623. Uh, one of his great discoveries is uh, this barometer an instrument used to measure air pressure. So because of that, uh, the scientists have decided to use his name as SI unit for pressure to, to name after him. So yeah, you get a lot of interesting uh, scientists and a lot of names that come from there. Okay, so now the third part, we are going on to pressure, the formula for pressure. So pressure is equal to force divided by area. The unit for pressure is Pascal, we've just learned that. Unit for force is Newton. SI unit for area is meter square. I want you to take note, this is meter, not cm. So whenever you have cm, you need to change the meters. Okay, you see that in the next example. So another way to write this is force equals to pressure times area. You can form it in this triangle, force, pressure, area. So for example, you want to find force, I'll take pressure times area. If I want to find pressure, I'll take force divided by area. Finally, if I want to find area, I take force divided by pressure. Okay? At least digest that first. Alright, let's move on and see how we can use this formula. So this is one example that you will might likely see in your test or in questions in your worksheet. So a box has a weight of 20 Newton. Notice weight is always goes by Newton. Its base area, so its base measures 2cm by 2cm. So you have 2 cm by 2 cm, there's a force acting downwards, 20 newtons. So what is the pressure of the box that exerts? What is the pressure that the box exerts on the ground? So how am I going to solve this question? So first I need to find out the area, the area that is facing the ground. Okay? So this is my box. The first part I need to do, I need to fade the area of the box touching the ground. It's 2 cm by 2 cm, but remember that the SI unit is not cm, it's meter. So 2 cm I need to convert to meter is 0 0.02. 2 cm I convert again is 0 0.02. 0 0.02 multiplied by 0 0.02, I get 0 0.0004 meter square or square meter. Alright, so now we have the area touching the ground. What's the formula for pressure? Can you remember? Pressure equals to force divided by area. So do I have the force in the previous question? If you see, yes, we have a force. Since weight is a force, this force is 20 Newton acting downwards. So we already found the area. We just need to take force divided by area. The force is 20 Newtons divided by this area we just found. Answer, we get 50,000 Pascal. So that is a lot of force. Alright, so that gives you some time. You can pause the video to copy this down. After that, we can move on. Alright, let's move on. Next question. So I want you to try this yourself now. Give you some time. A box has a weight of 50 newtons. Its base measures 5 meters by 5 meters. 
why is the box so why is the pressure of the box exerting on the ground? So remember we have force here, weight is a force. We need to divide by the area, the area facing the ground. So I need you to find the area of the ground facing the ground, then after that you take force divide by this area. So pause this video now to try it by yourself. After that, then continue and check with my answer. Okay, you should have done that. So let's check the answer. So what is the pressure of the box exerting on the ground? Area of the box touching the ground is 5 meters times 5 meters. It's 25 meters square. I do not need to change the units because they are already in meters. So that's good. It's easier for us. So next, uh, the pressure is given by force divided by area. The force is the weight, which is 50 newtons, divided by area we just found out. 15 divided by 25, we get 2 pascal. So yeah, we have a very nice number here, very simple. Okay, you should be able to do this. If you find this difficult, remember to go to class and ask your teacher. Okay? So let's try one more question. Now I have a bit more numbers. I want you to find out which number you need to use. So calculate the pressure again for this box that exists on the ground. Now, take note, you need to leave your answer as Newton per cm squared. It is not Pascal anymore. So because it's Newton per cm square, you don't need to convert this cm into meters anymore. You can just leave it in cm. Alright, so you remember pressure equals to force divided by area. You need to take this force, divide by the area touching the ground. Now the area touching the ground, you need to take this length, multiply by this breadth. You cannot take this one because this doesn't face the ground. Alright, so pause the video to try, see whether you can get the answer. Okay, you should finish calculating. Let's check the answer. Okay, so calculate the base area of the box first. You take 60 times 10, you get 600 cm square or 600 square centimeter. Now, pressure equals to force divided by area. 120 newtons is my weight divided by my area. I get 0 0.2 newton per square centimeter. So that's the answer. Check if you got correct. Okay, so you probably are able to do this now. So look forward to do a few more of these questions in class when you come back to school. Okay, the last part of this pressure uh, notes, we need to go through the application. So what do we use it for? How do we use it every day? You can refer this to your textbook, page 102, if you want to find out more, but this is the summary. So let's look at the normal pin. The pin that you use maybe for your notice board, you can use it for your clothes. All right, so pin usually uh, we like to make the tip very small. Why? Because with a small area, it allows uh, the pressure to become very big. Okay, so it allows the pin to pierce the paper or wooden board easily. That's why I have a small area with the same amount of force, the pressure is very great. Okay, another example, I have knives. The edge of my knife, the cutting edge of my knife is very small. Why? Because it allows uh, the same force to have a high pressure. So it allows the edge to cut through jacks easily. So that's why I have a large pressure when I have a small area. Okay, I have a large pressure when I have a small area, given the same amount of force. So same thing, if I have a football or those soccer boots, or even when those of you who are uh, in athletics, you need to run, you see there are spikes on, your, on the sole of your shoes. Now why, does the, why do I have spikes on the, shoe, on the sole of the shoe? Again, because the large pressure increases the shoe's grip on the ground, actually increases friction. Okay, not so much on friction actually, but the grip. So because I have a lot of pressure exerting on the ground, it actually makes it easier for me to stay firm on the ground. I don't get end up sliding around easily. So this is actually some of the things that you can find that uh, pressure is very useful in. Okay, so you can copy this down. And with that, we've come to the end of this video and as well as this whole chapter on force and pressure. Okay, if you have any questions or in fact if you find any interesting videos that you want to share with the class, please come to school and share with, the, with your teachers. Okay, if any questions, remember to come to school to ask. Do not be shy and please make sure that you check through all the videos, check through your notes, make sure all the blanks are filled up before you come to school. Alright, with that, we come to the end of this uh, videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have find it helpful to learn. Okay, thank you. This is Mr. Patrick Ang. Uh, I will give you the greeting that 1E1 always likes to greet. Thank you and goodbye and have a nice day.